Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Kay and today we're going to talk about our EKG basics. Okay, so in order to really understand how to read an EKG, you have to know the waves. Okay, you have to know the waves, you have to know the different segments, you know, the complexes, the intervals, and you have to just know what they mean. And also we're going to go over the typical rates. Now, once you get this down, it's just smooth sailing from there. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so our first wave is the P wave. So this is our P wave right here. And the P wave represents atrial depolarization. Okay, so depolarization means contraction. Okay, so this is when the atrium contracts. Okay, so this is our P wave. Next, we have our PR segment, which is right here. And this is the segment, the short period of time between where the atrium contracts and the ventricles contract. Okay, so it's our the short time between atrial depolarization and ventricular depolarization. Next, we have our QRS complex. So this is our QRS complex. Okay, let's erase all of this. Okay, so our QRS complex has three different waves. So we have the Q wave, which is here, the R, which is here, and we have our S, which is here. Okay, so this is our QRS complex, and the QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization, aka ventricular contraction. Okay, next, let's get rid of this. We have our ST segment, which is from here to here. And our ST segment is the beginning of ventricular repolarization, aka ventricular relaxation. So depolarization means contraction and repolarization means relaxation. Okay, so after our ventricles contract, then it has to relax. So this is the start of the re relaxation of the ventricles. This is the ST segment. Then we have our T wave. And this is our T wave. And the T wave is a continuation of ventricular repolarization. So it starts here, ventricular repolarization start here at the ST segment, and it ends here, okay? Also, after this T wave, we can have something called a U wave. And, okay, that's ugly. <laughs> okay, it's usually not this high. Just picture something that looks like this. Let's try that again. So the U wave probably looks, yeah. Okay, that looks better. So after this T wave, sometimes we have the U wave and I'm not sure what that means. You know, a lot of people don't really know that what that means, but that is our U wave. And it usually comes after the T wave. And it's not always there. I rarely see it. But if you see that, then it's not cause for alarm or anything. Um, that's just something that is there sometimes. Okay, so now that we know what our different waves mean in our segments, we're going to talk about different intervals. So there are three different intervals. There is the PR interval, QRS, and the QT interval. Okay, so when you're a monitor tech, you're going to be measuring these different interval in order to get a value. So when you measure this, it's going to give you a number and based on the looks of the actual rhythm and those values, you'll be able to determine what your rhythm is. Okay, so the first one that we're going to 
talk about is our PR interval. And this is the first thing that you measure. So you're going to measure from the beginning of the P to the beginning of the Q. Okay, so even though we call it a PR interval, it's actually a PQ interval. We just don't call it that. So we call it a PR interval. Okay, and typically the measurement is 0.12 to 0.20. And if it goes over 0.20, if it's 0.21 or greater, we, we are going to refer to it as a heart block. Okay, and depending on what's going on with our PR interval, it could be a first degree or a second degree heart block or even a third degree. So there's different factors that will determine which one it is, okay? Next up is our QRS segment, or we just call it the QRS complex. So we still measure the Q, the beginning of the Q, and then we measure here at the beginning of our S. Okay, so this is our QRS. And the QRS has to be point less than 0.12. Okay, typically the book will tell you between 0.06 and 0.10, but if you if you just remember it has to be less than 0.12, then you'll be okay. All right, so greater than 0.12, we will call it a bundle branch block. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and erase this. And then now we're going to measure our QT interval. So we start here at the Q, like the, the other one. And then we end here at the end of the T. Oops. So this is our QT interval. And the measurement is typically less than 0.44 seconds. So between 0.35 and 0.44 is typically normal for our QT interval. Okay, guys, so I almost forgot about my R to R, okay? So to, in order to get the rate, we have to measure the R to R. So it's measuring the R from one QRS complex to another. So picture there's another QRS complex and then you measure it here. So from one R to another, that is gonna give you the rate, okay? And based on these values, um, when you measure all of this, these different intervals, you're gonna get a number and based on those numbers you can determine what rhythm you have All right, guys, so that's it for this video. These are the basics of our EKG. Once you get this down, everything is going to be so much easier. Okay, so you want to make sure you know this, and then we'll go into the different kinds of heart rhythms, and I'm going to actually show you what it looks like on the EKG.